Hello YouTube, welcome back to my video. So I said I'd go in depth with the bike a little more with the range. And here's the video. Alright, so let's jump right into it. So I got a couple of comments and of course, naturally people were concerned about the range on the bike. And, you know, initially I kind of defended it, but, you know, there's still some things I could defend on this bike. And... It just it's just simple aerodynamics and friction really is is all that goes into play. Now let me let me elaborate. So the biggest thing of course being the weight. Now you get it. That's that's solid, you know. It's a heavy bike. The wheels are pretty heavy duty on it. I mean look how thick they are. You know, put that into perspective, that's my hand. Now we're looking at least three and a half, almost maybe four inches. And you got my stuff here. Now my stuff really, I don't have a lot of stuff going on back here, just random ass. I don't want to take this backpack out because I actually tied it down perfectly and I only really need it in case I'm taking something out, this is hanging down. This chain is pretty heavy too, it's heavy duty, but everything back here amounts to maybe 10 pounds, including the basket itself. And the thing is, I actually never brought this bike down to 1%. I'm actually in the process of doing that, but in a different way. You see, this third battery doesn't actually have a uh, shutoff switch. As you can see, there is no shutoff switch on this battery. Only, only this battery has it right here. That's a shutoff switch, and this one has it. It's way on the bottom, you can barely see it, but it is present. I don't know if my camera's showing that, I can't see it. But it's a red shutoff switch underneath the battery. And I shut that one off and I shut this one off. And I'm at about 28% now. And I'm trying to get the bike down to zero because I actually, the lowest I got it down to was about uh, 18, 19, 18 or 19%, but somewhere in that ballpark. So like I said, the bike did 50 miles, but that's my range, okay? Now what I did was, see, <clears throat> I live I live kind of in like western-ish Illinois, but not too far west. And I went from here, 26 miles out that way east in a town I used to live in. And that's 26 miles away, and what I did was I was pretty easy on it. And I was uh, in about second or third gear, and I didn't go any higher than that point on my entire trip to that location. And I only wasted about 10% getting there. And it, that was pretty impressive, considering that, you know, with three batteries, you know, and I thought to myself, if I keep this going, then obviously, you know, maybe with some headwind, I might waste 15% getting back. So that's 52 miles and then some. But I actually didn't... I didn't have the patience to do that. I just, I saw the trail was real straight. And I'm like, well, I'm going to have a thrill on my way back. So I actually hit the gas on this thing, quite literally. The fuck was that? Hit the gas on this thing, quite literally. And uh, I, I got back with about 29% because I was doing, I was going through headwind. And I was in sixth, seventh gear. So that's why I had 52 miles of range. I'm not defending the bike. You know, I'm not like sponsored or anything. I'm just saying that that's what that's why I got 52 miles of range in the first place was because 26 plus 26 is 52. I went 26 miles and I went back. Simple as that. And that's why I had the, the short range and I came back with 29%. So that wasn't even truly the range. Now I bet if I was going, you know... 20, 23, 24 miles an hour on the way back, it probably would have came back with at least, you know, I'll, 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 I'll be, I won't be that generous with the numbers. You know, maybe 65%, then that would have, you know, 52 miles and then some 65% with this bike I can go. I know where I can go with this bike and, and I bet if I really wanted to, I could get 100 miles of range. That's if I'm doing full throttle, but with low gears now you're not going fast you're, you're going you know 23 24 miles an hour but you're getting that range now there's other bikes out there that can get that range and go faster but those are way expensive they got bigger batteries 
and this one was a pretty penny too but i i like the range i like the bike and it it, it works out for me personally some people are, are range junkies and they want to you know they want to go far and me 50 miles is fucking enough you know i don't care like um so that's why i got 52 miles of range on it and like i said i never brought it back with with zero percent it came back with 29 because i have a lot of range anxiety unfortunately and i'm like oh am i gonna make it am i gonna make it so that's what happened with me now the only reason today i shut off the batteries is because i want to see what happens at zero percent i'm sure it just shuts off but i want to see right now we're at the famous 29 and the bike is getting significantly weaker it won't go that fast but once you get it going and, and it's actually at the speed and it starts coasting at that speed it just kind of flows at that speed but if you're stopping a lot i keep thinking there's someone in the woods over there whatever fuck them i'm getting sidetracked for no reason so yeah if you keep it at a consistent speed then it, it just goes and nothing really happens until it dies i, I would assume but yeah that's that's essentially all i wanted to elaborate with it really um i might make a third video in case i miss some extra details but yeah the weight obviously it, it counts a factor because i'm 170 something pounds plus the bike being roughly 70 pounds that's that's 270 right there and then you know the bike just doing full throttle headwind is seriously something that you will never hear anybody talk about headwind it plays a major role and your range on e-bikes. If the wind is pushing you, you have a very significant advantage. You are going to get a lot more range if the wind is pushing you, if you have tailwind. If there is headwind, the range will significantly decrease. I want you people to keep that in mind. E-bikes, anything electric, is so susceptible to wind. If there's wind and it's pushing you, if you're, if you're pushing up against the wind, you're not going to, it won't keep that same range. It's going to tank. I don't care how powerful your batteries are. It's going to tank. That battery has to work harder to push that bike against the wind. Along with the weight, along with basic physics, we call that resistance slash friction tires. I don't care if they have no tread or high tread. It's friction. It is stopping it and the throttle is pushing it against the wind and these bad boys they gotta work extra hard to push you don't care it could be a fifty thousand dollar e-bike top of the line best thing ever it will tank so i just wanted to elaborate that obviously i never actually pushed this thing to zero percent so i might make an experiment doing two things i might go to a 26 mile away location and come back going slow it'll be torture but I'm going to have to do it to prove a point. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to ride the bike around this area. And I'm going to use one battery at a time. So I'm going to use that first one because that one doesn't have a kill switch. Because if I, if I turn on that one, then two will be using and then I'll be cheating. So I'll keep that one on. And once that goes to zero, then I'll use this one. And then I'll use that one. Or it doesn't matter. I think this one's actually the best battery. And that's second best and that's third best. So I might go with that one first and then that one last because I want to see what's more efficient. If I if I use each individual battery or if I use all three batteries, I think all three batteries are actually smarter because they equally, you know, contribute power. But I want to see them. I'm, I'm just so curious. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Actually, wait, wait we're not going to end it yet. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ride it for a little bit out here. There's nobody around and there's nobody in this little park. Let's take it for a spin and I want to see... I want to kind of show you guys something. Now, bear with me. It's going to be difficult to ride. And if I can't do it, then we'll cut the video short. But, you know, I got a shift. So we'll, 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 we'll figure something out. Okay. So right now we're on... Well, it just went to 30% somehow, even though it was on 29. So, whatever. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go down there. And I'm going to try to get it in, like, sixth gear. Hang on. I'm going to upshift it now. Just give me a second. Okay, now we're in sixth. So the battery is a little... It's undying a little bit, but... We're kind of giving her all she's got right now, and sixth gear is already 
you can hear the RPMs. So I gotta, sh I gotta upshift. Okay, so I've upshifted. So I have some headwind right now, and look. It really doesn't want to do 30. It just doesn't want to do 30. It's just, it's one battery, it's dying, and it's just refusing. I'm cutting across this field, I don't care. I'm not doing that turn. Okay, uh, I'm like, gonna bust my shit if I keep this up. See, now what we're doing is we're, 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 we're straining the gear because we never downshifted properly. Okay. All right, we're gonna pull a U-turn over here by these Pull the potty. All right, see, here's what I mean. Here's what the bike is gonna do if you start it off in this gear. It's, it's really a painful thing. Hopefully it does it. I didn't do it that time. We're gonna go higher gear. What it does is the chain starts hopping and it's skipping. You heard that? It's so bad for the, it starts to stretch the chain and it can break. That's what I mean by manual transmission. This thing is made to be going down at least third gear and you gotta upshift it manually. Let's try to hit 30. Sorry for the, here, I'll skip. Actually, no, let's, we'll make this raw footage. I'll pedal a little bit because I want to help it. There we go, we're at 30. Tight bend up here, I don't want to bust my ass. This is pretty hard to do one-handed. So that's what I mean, the bike, you know, with this battery being at 25% now, it, it's, it doesn't want to do 30. Unless the tailwind pushes you. We're gonna go back over there where we came from. Being a complete asshole putting across this soccer field, but whatever, I don't care. So that's that. That's my video. I did a test ride on it too, and you know if you want to see more, please please do like the video. Leave the comments. I like reading comments. I like responding to comments. And um, I hope my video helped you better understand the range on this bike. And I hope that it kind of cleared up most of the confusion. And I hope the test ride helped you understand what I meant about the 30 miles an hour. Um, now, if it was full battery, this thing would have hit 35 easy. But, you know, since it's on one battery and it's like three-fourths of the way dead, then it really won't do a 30. It doesn't like it. So, please like the video, comment your opinion, and we will post more. If there's more comments, we'll make a third video elaborating further. Thank you so much.